<laughs> How cool. Oh my god. It's crazy to think that people actually went there. How the heck did they get up there anyway? Margot Lee Shetterly was born in Hampton, Virginia, the birthplace of the American space industry. Her dad worked as a research scientist at NASA's Langley Research Center, and her mom was a professor at the historically black Hampton University. Shetterly's roots give her a personal connection to the subject of her book, Hidden Figures. In it, she tells the stories of four black women who contributed to our country's success in the race to space. Today, I'll tell you about two of those women and the incredible contributions that they made. And because it's a big part of the story, I'll tell you about the historical and political climate they lived in. To learn more about the other hidden figures, check out our short form guide. Short form makes the world's best guides to nonfiction books, complete with well-crafted short exercises to help you learn faster and remember more. You can get a five day free trial and a discounted annual subscription if you go to shortform.com YouTube. Click the link in the description below. And for more great book summary videos, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button. If you find this video helpful, click the like button below. And let us know if you're interested in us covering the other two hidden figures on this channel. Our first hidden figure is Mary Jackson. Let me set the stage for you. In August of 1945, Japan surrendered to the Allied forces, marking the end of World War II. Within about three weeks, the government's civilian workforce was massively downsized. People were losing jobs left and right. At the same time, conservative politicians were trying to roll back as much social progress as possible. As we pivoted into the Cold War, they labeled anyone that fought against segregation, Jim Crow, and white supremacy as anti-American and communist. Their goal was to send women back to the kitchens and black Americans to the ghetto. It was a full-on witch hunt. And white Americans were all for it. The campaign was so successful that it became an international embarrassment and a major problem. See, the US desperately needed allies against Soviet communism, but why would a foreign leader support a country that kicks them out of hotels and restaurants or segregates people that look like them? On top of that, Black soldiers were still segregated, and they began to ask some pretty blunt questions like, uh, why should I fight for a country that treats us a lot like how Nazi Germany treats the Jews? It's 1946, man. Come on, we're supposed to be past this. In response to all this, in 1947, President Truman signed two executive orders. The first finally desegregated the military, and the second made federal department heads personally responsible for rooting out discrimination in their departments. These orders open up the doors for our hidden figure, Mary Jackson. Mary Jackson grew up in Hampton Roads near Langley, Virginia. She graduated from Hampton Institute with a double major in math and physical science. It was an impressive accomplishment for a black woman growing up in a segregated and deeply racist environment. In Mary's time, Black Americans were paying just as many taxes as white Americans no, no, for things they weren't even allowed to use. Imagine you're paying for schools that your kids can't attend, swimming pools that you're not allowed to swim in, or bathrooms that you can't even use. In that environment, making it to one of the three black colleges in the state, let alone graduating, was a major challenge. Mary's experience fueled a special passion for helping prepare young black women for college. As leader of a Girl Scout troop, she focused on showing her girls they deserved better than what a racist society was prepared to give them. As the Korean War heated up, Mary's math skills got her transferred to the Langley Aeronautical Lab, the birthplace of NASA. Now, to the rest of Virginia, Langley had developed a reputation as some kind of weirdo zone where black and white scientists worked together and women had real jobs. And sure, things were more progressive there. But as Mary soon found out, more progressive is a far cry from not racist. One day, Mary's boss sent her on assignment to the other side of the complex. While she was there, she asked a group of white women where the bathroom was and they just laughed at her. Why would they know where the black bathroom was? As Mary hammered through the halls in furious shock, 
she ran into Kaz Zernecki, a white engineer working on Langley's supersonic pressure tunnel. He was a total stranger, but he heard her out. As the conversation came to a close, Kaz invited Mary to join his team, and it didn't take her long to shine in her new position. Soon after, she became the first black woman at Langley to be promoted to the rank of engineer. Even amongst white women, female engineers were a rarity, so Mary was good real good. But she wasn't content to succeed alone. Over the years, she did all she could to give young black girls the opportunity to see black professionals working in her cutting-edge dynamic environment. And she did all she could to advocate for the women she worked with. Mary Jackson opened the doors to a whole generation of black women to explore fields that they'd been previously barred from, to delve into science and math and tech, and to know that they belonged there. Our next hidden figure is Katherine Johnson. And yes, this part is about space. Let's set the scene. During the Cold War, several events took place that became critically important to America's history. First, in 1954, the Supreme Court finally ruled that separate is not equal. In the landmark case Brown versus Board of Education, it was quote unquote officially decided that segregation was unconstitutional. Just three years later, while Americans were still fighting about the Supreme Court ruling, the Soviets successfully launched the first satellite into orbit. People around the world tuned in to hear Sputnik's iconic beep. And Americans couldn't help but wonder, if the Soviets could launch Sputnik completely uncontested, couldn't they do the same with a nuke? Sputnik's launch highlighted some major problems. It wasn't just that America was losing the Cold War. It was a sign that the Soviets were way ahead of the states in tech, education, and equality. While white Americans were trying to keep black children off of high school and college campuses, the Soviets were working hard to educate all of their children. In short, it became painfully clear that segregation was an unethical, unpatriotic embarrassment to our nation. And, more importantly for the government, it was holding us back. So in 1961, President John F. Kennedy signed an executive order. All federal agencies and contractors must take affirmative action to ensure equal opportunity, regardless of race, creed, color, or national origin. And to address the fact that America was losing the space race, he converted the famous Langley Aeronautical Lab into NASA, a brand new research organization focused on space flight. And that brings us to our hidden figure, Katherine Johnson. As a kid, Katherine already stood out. She first went to college at age 14, where William Glader, one of the greatest mathematicians of his time, created classes exclusively for her. She ended up graduating summa cum laude, with the highest distinction, with a double major in math and French, and then a grad school degree also with honors. Her excellent credentials got her a job at Langley as a quote unquote sub-professional. You'd think with her resume she'd earn better, but this is how most women at Langley started their careers. But it only took her two weeks to get promoted to the flight research division. And a year later, she was promoted again. One of her first research assignments was to figure out why a propeller plane had fallen out of the sky for no apparent reason. The researchers were stumped, but when Catherine analyzed the data, she found a missing link. A jet passing by earlier had created a turbulent wake of air. When the propeller plane hit that wake, the engine stalled and it fell out of the sky. Ever since then, air traffic regulations mandate a minimum amount of time and distance between flight paths. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> oh my God, as someone who is afraid to death of flying and has to do it all the time, this makes me feel a lot more comfortable. Long story short, it didn't take her long to accumulate respect. And while Catherine didn't know it yet, she was about to become critical to America's efforts of sending human beings into space. You see, by 1958, the Soviets were definitely winning the space race. They had just completed their second manned orbital flight. Meanwhile, American astronauts hadn't even left the atmosphere. Ouch. But with the establishment of NASA, efforts at Langley kicked into high gear. Catherine's flight research division was wrapped into a new brain trust, the Space Task Group. Catherine's team was responsible for calculating the exact trajectory from liftoff to landing. It was up to her whether the astronauts would get home safely 
or die trying. But she was undaunted. She told her bosses, tell me where you want the man to land and I'll tell you where to send him up. <laughs> now, that is badass. By the time NASA was ready to try a manned orbital flight, Catherine's calculations had become so famously accurate that the astronauts trusted her more than IBM's computers. John Glenn himself was quoted as saying, get Catherine to check the numbers. If she says they're good, then I'm ready to go. And long story short, the numbers were good. Even today, few Americans realize that Neil Armstrong's footprint, the famous one small step, wouldn't be there today without the efforts of the black women at Langley. Women like Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, and Christine Darden. While they may not become household names like John Glenn or Buzz Aldrin, it's up to each of us to make sure that America remembers the contributions its black citizens made to our shared history. Never forget that America's greatest achievements were done by all its people, not just the ones we put on the front page. If you'd like to learn more about how black women advance the American space industry, check out the short form guide on Hidden Figures, or consider watching the movie. Don't forget, you can get a five day free trial and a discounted annual subscription if you go to shortform.com YouTube. There's a link in the description below. And support the author and publisher by buying Hidden Figures. A link to buy the book is below as well. And finally, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next short form video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.